Wait a second. Did you see the subtitle of this entanglement bead? Yes. Intentional self-programming. I think this offends me. This sounds like brainwashing to me. I value my freedom too much to get involved with whatever this is. I just think what I want to think. Would you wish to use a computer with no programming? A brain is just a special biological computer. And when we explore the ultimate entanglement, we're at a level much deeper than brain function. The brain is an instrument we use and program to help us connect and function at the much deeper level of freely chosen relationships. Do you mean there is something deeper than science of the human brain? Much deeper. The human brain and our understanding of its functioning is only a tiny stepping stone. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi can help us on this journey. Contrary to what we tend to assume, the normal state of the mind is chaos. Without training and without an object in the external world that demands attention, people are unable to focus their thoughts for more than a few minutes at a time. We don't usually notice how little control we have over the mind because habits channel psychic energy so well that thoughts seem to follow each other. When we are left alone with no demands on attention, the basic disorder of the mind reveals itself. With nothing to do, it begins to follow random patterns, usually stopping to consider something painful or disturbing. Unless a person knows how to give order to his or her thoughts, attention will be attracted to whatever is most problematic at the moment. It will focus on some real or imaginary pain, on recent grudges or long-term frustrations. Entropy is the normal state of consciousness, a condition that is neither useful nor enjoyable. To avoid this condition, people are naturally eager to fill their minds with whatever information is readily available, as long as it distracts attention from turning inward and dwelling on negative feelings. TV will structure the viewer's attention. Once one develops a strategy for overcoming psychic entropy, to give up habit becomes almost impossible. The better route for avoiding chaos in consciousness, of course, is through habits that give control over mental process to the individual rather to some external source of stimulation, such as the programs of network TV. To acquire such habits requires practice. A person who forgoes the use of symbolic skills is never really free. His thinking will be directed by the opinions of his neighbors, by the editorials in the papers, and by the appeals of television. He will be at the mercy of experts, Ideally, the end of extrinsically applied education should be the start of an education that is motivated intrinsically. The tools that make the flow of thought possible are common property. He can generate ordered trains of thoughts regardless of what is happening in external reality. When a person has learned a symbolic system well enough to use it, he has established a portable self-contained world within the mind. Whenever the outside world offers no mercy, an internal symbolic system can become a salvation. People without an internalized symbolic system can all too easily become captives of the media. The human race is challenged more than ever before to demonstrate our mastery, not over nature, but of ourselves. It's, there is no doubt that we have built a, a kind of a, a, a permanent irritation in our souls. 
and we now call it technology. And so we, we have people out there now trying to fight the addiction that they have found themselves in because there is no way for them to retreat, not just from others, but into themselves. Now, what happens to the person who has no interior superstructure? They're the ones who collapse when the first house burns down. Or it's at that moment that they discover finally that the house isn't really part of them, that they are still there and need attention. They need a new world to, uh, a new world to see, a new way to see the world, and a new way to see themselves. We are eternally distracted. It's now in our politics. And we're not paying any attention to what is going on in this country that is undermining everything we've ever been. We're paying attention to tweets. But we start asking kids at the age of five, are you going to be a doctor like your daddy? Uh, or do you want to go around the world? Are you saving your money? Uh, how much do you get paid for taking out the garbage? You can get a better job than that. I mean, it's, it's all about out there instead of in here. Instead of in here. And uh, I, I, where is it getting us? Where is it getting us? How many, how many houses can you live in at one time? How many cars can you drive? How many boats can you sail? When that internal center is not nourished, like any physical part of us, it dies. It dies. And then I find myself another God, because everybody has a God. There is no, don't tell me that God doesn't exist in this society, on the contrary. But this God is self-drawn, and this God has something to do primarily with making money, getting power, having status, uh, being secure and, and being responsible for our own security. And those who can't do it don't get it. That's all. They just don't get it. So this, this interior must, must be fed. And, you know, the funny thing is that uh, the Pla uh, Plato and the philosophers dealt with the big ideas of life. You can call them whatever you want to, religious terms or, or poetic terms, but uh, they, they concentrated on what was beauty, what was truth, what was joy, what, what was uh, justice, what was right. And then all of a sudden, after uh, the Enlightenment, after uh, uh, increased literacy, after uh, mountains of publications, uh, we, we, we are now inundated, let alone this moment, with a, a life lived in a screen, my screen or their screen, somebody's screen. So we have cut the interior life off from the exterior growth, by and large, except for places like this that concentrate on it.